What's up guys, John here and welcome to Baltimore Retro Gaming and today I got a pretty interesting shooter for you. It's a PS4 shooter. It's actually a shoot 'em up that came out in the mid 90s or maybe the early 90s over in the arcades in Japan and then it was ported over to the Sega Saturn in Japan somewhere in the mid 90s and now we finally got a port on the PlayStation 4 and that's great because the PS4 is region free. That means anybody can play it and that game is the Game Paradise Cruising Mix. Let's check it out. Okay, so this is my copy of the Game Paradise Cruising Mix, and if you hear a weird noise in the background, it's because I'm at work and the embroidery machine's on, so if you hear a bunch of embroidery noise, I do apologize, but anyway, all right, so I do have this game inside of a clear plastic retro protection case, and uh, for, all my, for all my games, any, anyway, my obscure ones, I always put them in those cases, so here's the game, um, the cover looks great, the spine is in Japanese, unfortunately, but that's okay, I know what game it is. And, you know, this isn't going to come with anything crazy, but there is this, I don't want to say this is an art card, but there's a code on the other side. I'm not sure if it's DLC, but I'll check that out at another time. I'll let you guys know what that is, but I don't want to show you guys the code. So there's the game right there, but this game actually comes with a DVD, and I actually watched this DVD. Um, I don't know if you can use it on a normal DVD player, although it does say NTSC All, so I guess it's a region-free disc. But it is an anime based on the game, or maybe the game's based on the anime. I have no idea. It's about 16 minutes long. It appears to be a couple of episodes of the Game Paradise TV show, I guess, when they made it. It's all in Japanese. I can't understand any of it. I did watch it, and it, it's pretty decent for 16 minutes long. It's what you would expect. It's a, a shooter anime. <laughs> but anyways, guys, that's my copy of the Game Paradise. You know, pretty impressive packaging you know, for what it is. So the game Paradise Cruise and Mix. Now, let me tell you guys, this is a treat. I play a lot of shoot 'em ups and this one just hits me in all the right places. So anyway, when you first start the game, you're going to notice there's five different modes. Um, you're going to have an arcade mode. You're going to have a data mode, a DLC check and options and a classic mode. So obviously two of those would have to do with the gameplay, which is the classic mode and the arcade mode. And then the data mode, the DLC check, and the option. We'll talk about those first just to get those out of the way. So the first thing I checked out was the DLC check. Now, there were two locked options in DLC check. I don't know whether I needed to accomplish something like finish the game or meet some kind of score requirement to unlock the two things on the DLC check. Or it might be something simple as open an account, a Japanese account, Japanese PSN account that is, and restart the game. I'm not sure. I couldn't access the DLC check, but there was two things in there. Now, the second thing was the option menu. Now, there was three things under the option menu. Um, one thing was the key config, so you can uh, kind of control, you know, where you want the keys on your um, your PS4 controller. You can adjust the sound volume, and you can change the uh, screen size, so you can pretty much change the uh, margins on the screen. Now, the Data Mode HD, so this is a pretty cool collection of artwork and screenshots for six different games. Exeron, Formation Z, Field Combat, 1986, 1987, and 1989, which could be known as Alpha Plus. Now, I looked all these games up, and they're all Jalico games, so I'm assuming the original game Paradise, you know, the arcade version that is, I'm assuming that was released by Jalico. But they have a, um, it's kind of like a gallery. So the Data Mode HD is pretty much a gallery just showcasing older Jalico games for whatever reason it's on there. And one of the games that they showcase, Exeron, now I'm not 100% sure about this. So again, if you know anything about this, let me know in the comments below. But I do own a couple of Famicom games and Super Famicom games. And one of the Famicom games, or you know, the original NES in Japan that I have is Exeron. It's kind of like a real primitive asteroids kind of like shoot them up so i'm pretty sure i have that game for the famicom not a hundred percent on that but i'm pretty sure and another thing i was pretty sure i owned this game on the sega saturn as an import i was almost a hundred percent positive now i have been going through my games recently and there were a few that i had you know catalog that did come up missing I don't think anyone stole them or anything but i do think i lost a couple of games in a move i moved a little over a year ago um, 
for whatever reason, this might have been one of those games. I know another game I lost in the move was uh, Drive Girls for the PS Vita. I was able to replace that game recently. I found it in GameStop for like $7, so that was pretty cool. Anyway, let's talk about the two gameplay modes in Game Paradise Cruising Mix. So the first gameplay mode, at least the first one that I played, was the Classic mode. And we don't really need to get into great detail um, in the Classic mode and the Arcade mode plus, but pretty much... Now, I can navigate Japanese menu systems fairly well. You know, I don't know Japanese, but I look at pictures and I can pretty much understand what's going on. But with that being said, I had a little bit of difficulty understanding the menu system in the classic mode. Now, the arcade mode HD or the arcade mode plus or whatever is a different story. But in the classic mode, there was a lot of different, I guess, customization options that were in Japanese. I couldn't really understand them. So I pretty much just hit O because you hit O instead of X in Japanese PlayStation games to move forward instead of go backwards. So I kept hitting O until the game started. And the only thing that I noticed as far as customization options that I understood on the classic mode is you can choose between a horizontal or a vertically scrolling shooter. You do have an option to change the screen, you know, pretty much however you want. And you do have five characters you can choose from. Um, two of the most playable characters, in my opinion, that most people would pick are probably the, uh, the spaceship, like the little spaceship that looks like a shooter spaceship. And the girl, I forget her name, it does show it in the game, but, you know, the girl's got the best, you know, power-up specials and, you know, all that stuff. But um, in classic mode, I could not find a way to adjust the difficulty. And for me, that's no big deal. But for newcomers to the genre, that could be rather bothersome. Um, you know, not that that's, this game is, not that it's really hard. I mean, it's not a really hard game, but for people new to the genre, it can be maybe a little bit intimidating. Um, you do have four lives, so you know every time you start with a new continue or start the game in general, um, they do give you four lives. Now, as far as the continues go, my first playthrough I used six continues. They may give you nine, they may give you an infinite amount, I'm not quite sure, but I don't think you're going to have a problem uh, making your way through this game. Um, and and the, other, the other mode, the arcade mode, you can change the difficulty, but even in the classic mode where you can't, I don't really think you're going to have a problem making your way through the game. Now, you might have a problem making it through in one life, but I'm pretty sure they're pretty uh, liberal in giving you continues now. The arcade mode plus is pretty much the same thing as the classic mode, but you do have more options. Um, there's a time attack mode. Uh, you can change the difficulty, and that's uh, pretty much in English. Um, you can select what stage you want to start from or select one stage you want to play if you just want to show your friends. Um, there's an option called online entry. Now, I'm not really sure what that does, and you may have to be logged into a Japanese PSN account. I'm not 100% sure. But I did see it as an option. I tried to click on it and play with it. I couldn't figure it out or get it started. So there is some kind of online option. I don't know if you can play online with friends or it's probably just like an online leaderboard. You know, it's, I would say most likely it's an online leaderboard if I had to guess. So pretty much in my opinion, it really doesn't matter which gameplay mode you pick, whether it be classic mode or arcade mode plus. However, I would have to say if I had to pick a favorite, it would be the Arcade Mode Plus. It's a lot more, it's a lot easier to navigate. Most of it's in English, and I think all of you will understand what's going on. Not to say that Classic Mode, there's anything, nothing wrong with that. I just think that it, it's my opinion and my recommendation that if you're going to play this game for the first time, you want to use the Arcade Mode Plus. It, it's just a, a all-around better experience. Now, some things that came to mind after playing this game, or at least playing through all the levels is the game brought back and referenced older retro games similar to Retro Game Challenge on the DS. Now, I think this is pretty cool considering this is a retro game and that the concept of that is becoming more and more popular in today's age. And what I mean by that is referencing retro games and today's games and using pixel art and things like that. Now, this game did that. It referenced those old retro games, but it did it 25 years ago or almost 25 years ago and I think that's a testament to the love and originality that went into this game. Now both gameplay modes whether you're playing in the classic or the arcade mode they pretty much have the same weapon systems and power-up systems at least as far as I can tell. You got your main shot that can be powered up by picking up P cubes it's like a little cube with a P on it that's the best way I can describe it. 
and you can get two support characters and usually the game's pretty forgiving and it gives you those support characters every time you die you'll see two orbs pop up on the screen you pick those up and it pretty much just increases the, the number of shots that you have against your enemies on the screen now you do get bombs i guess they're kind of like screen clearing bombs and they do look different for each character now the little girl i again i forget what her name is she definitely has the coolest screen clearing bombs uh, giant sprites pop up on screen and they're giant like the way Bonk was giant in that Bonk game where he grew or you know got real small it was like it kind of reminded me of that it kind of reminded me of Bonk um, so really you know as far as the gameplay goes the weapon systems and the power-ups it doesn't matter if you choose the classic mode or the arcade mode because in my opinion at least from what I could tell everything's the same now guys, let's talk about the levels in this game, because in my opinion, that's what makes this game. And it doesn't matter whether you choose the classic mode or the arcade mode, just like the weapon systems, the levels stay the same. So levels 1 and 2 are inside of an arcade, so you see Japanese arcade machines, and as you progress, it kind of turns into a claw machines. With some awesome sprites and wonderful colors for the visuals. Stage 3 turns more into an ar a traditional arcade shooter with a pretty cool Transformers inspired boss. Now, when I ran across that boss that kind of reminded me of a Transformer, that really reminded me of an attack in uh, Saturday Morning RPG. Anyone that's played that game knows how that game references 80s and 90s uh, pop culture, video games, uh, early morning cartoons, Saturday morning cartoons, stuff like that. So this game does a little bit of that, but again, you gotta think, this game came out in like 1995 originally for the Sega Saturn? Well, it was originally for the arcade, but it came out on the Saturn as well. It ported to the Saturn. But the fact that they did that all that time ago, I just, I just really think that's so cool. And I also think that makes it a really good idea. It was a good idea that someone ported it to the PlayStation 4. So, stage four takes place um, kind of like an arcade racer. So, that's its co contribution to the retro inspired theme. And on stage four, it kind of reminds me of RC Pro Am. You just kind of got a, it's, it's a regular shooter, but underneath you, there's a racetrack and cars, and you can shoot them if you don't shoot them in time. They throw projectiles at you. Um, the end boss on stage four, he's not the coolest. But the stage itself in Stage 4 is pretty cool, so it really doesn't matter. The boss is easy in Stage 4, it doesn't matter. Um, stage 5 kind of takes the same approach as Stage 4, but it gets a little bit more extreme and a little bit more into the retro stuff as far as Atari images and Atari style of games. Um, there's even a part of the stage that's kind of like Space Invaders, so you stay stationary. And you can move left to right, but it kind of turns into a, um, a Space Invaders kind of level at least for you know 30 seconds and I thought that was really cool um, I noticed random things that popped up on the screen in stage uh, stage 5 that said like 8-bit CPU um, you know they would it was like weird computer messages they would pop up randomly on the screen and the boss in stage 5 he's nothing special either but it seems that the boss in stage 5 starts to take shape of the main villain in the game um, there's, this, this game is actually inspired by an anime, or, or there's an anime inspired by the game, one of the two. And there is a, an evil villain in the game, in the anime. And in stage five, you start to see more glimpses of his face. He has a very characteristic uh, long face, black hair, nasty looking teeth. And you start to see him more and more, and there's like a version of him in stage five when you fight the end boss. Um, now, stage six is kind of odd. It starts off kind of like stages one and two, where it takes place in an arcade. But some crazy enemies start to pop up on screen, like naked men that throw other naked men at you. And it really reminded me of a shooter called Choaniki on the PlayStation 1, which is one of the craziest import shooters I've ever played. Now, you can tell that stage six is preparing you for the end boss because a lot of the enemies start to look like the like the main villain in the game, and you start to see his head kind of pop up, and you start seeing uh, versions of him kind of run around and sneak around the screen and hide behind things and stare at you. Now, there's also random computer clips that kind of fly at you that referenced things from mid 90s computer like uh kind of like the 8-bit cpu there's like weird 90s inspired computer 
messages that kind of reminded me of when I used to use DOS to load video games back before I ever had Windows. It reminded me of those command prompts back when I used to use DOS. So again, it referenced, you know, older computer stuff, and I thought that was pretty cool. Now, the end boss, the main villain, is just a head. He's pretty easy. For the end boss, he's actually very easy. Um, you know, which kind of makes this game a, a game that kids can play as well and enjoy and beat. You know, there's infinite continues as far as I can tell. Um, but when you beat stage six, which is the last stage, again, as far as I could tell, I couldn't access any of the DLC. When you see the end credits start to roll up, your, your, your ship can still move and you can fire at the letters on the end credits and they, they kind of go away on their own, but you can blow them up before they leave the screen. And I thought that was really cool. I've never played a shooter that kind of allowed or that allowed you to blow up the end credit, the text on screen as it appeared on screen. Again, I thought that was awesome. You know, guys, I will have to say playing this game was a real treat for me. Being a huge fan of the shoot 'em up genre, it makes me think of all the PlayStation systems. Now, the PlayStation 1 had a lot of great shooters, a lot of classic shooters, and I was very impressed with the catalog of shooters in the U.S. and especially in Japan. The PS2 was no exception on the PlayStation 2. We got a few decent shooters over here in the U.S., not as many as I think the PS1 did, but we got some good ones. There was definitely some great ones released in Japan, so that system was a success too, at least for that genre. Now, when I think about the PlayStation 3, the only shooter that I could think of is Under Defeat HD, and I think that was only released in PAL regions, or maybe it had a release over here, I don't know. I know there was some games you could download off of the PlayStation Store, but the PS3, it just didn't... At that time in gaming, a lot of shoot 'em ups were being ported to PC and real purists and people that were into the genre released those type of games on PC. So because those games were released on PC, sometimes they got Japanese ports on the Xbox 360. Now, there were some games released over here in the U.S., five of them that I could think of out here in the U.S. for the 360, so because it was made by Microsoft, I believe that's why the Xbox got the shoot 'em ups that it did. And that's actually, honestly, it's only, that's the only reason why I own Xbox 360 games. You know, other than a couple of RPGs I have on the system, it did have some pretty good shooters. And the PlayStation, it just got shit on, didn't get any shooters. And really the only reason I think the PlayStation 3 is great is because you can play PS1 games on it. Now, we move on to the PlayStation 4. The PlayStation 4 is a whole nother beast. All the retro gaming stuff is starting to become popular as the PlayStation 4 is released. You're starting to see arcade ports. You're starting to see a lot more shoot 'em ups You're seeing people more into shoot 'em ups um, That excites me because I'm a shoot 'em up guy. And there's a lot of shoot 'em ups that are coming out of Japan that you can get on PlayAsia. And because the PS4 is region free, you're able to play them. So... I'm really happy about the, the time and era that we're in in gaming right now. A lot of cool, innovative stuff's going on. And in my opinion, this game is just a testament to that. I mean, guys, if you like shoot 'em ups, if you like arcade style of games, this game is for you. Because, again, if you're a fan of the genre, you need this one in your collection. This one is not to be missed. Okay, so the question is do I recommend the game Paradise on the PlayStation 4? Well, the answer is, yep, it's a good game. Now, on my channel, I usually talk about retro games that you can't go out and buy in the store now, but for this game, it's a PS4 game. It's available on PlayAsia. Um, right now, I'm going to look on the computer. I actually have it pulled up. They're running a Black Friday sale. They're selling this game for $39.99 plus shipping. For a PS4 game that's this good, I feel like that's a decent deal. Um, I do feel like this is one of those games that once it sells out, it is going to climb in price is a pretty excellent shooter and a few things about this game so you can buy a, a Sega Saturn version an import version you can play it with an action replay cart um, a version on the Sega Saturn which I also recommend is probably going to cost you around 60 or 70 dollars um, there is other versions of this game coming out for pre-order on PlayAsia called Game Paradise Cruising Mix Special so I don't know what they're adding to the game, but I, I'm probably going to pick that version of the game up when it releases. Um, if you really want to play this game and you want to play it for free, I recommend to download the Sega Saturn version and burn it or play it on an emulator or just download the arcade ROM and play it that way. But guys, this is an awesome game. Highly recommended for anyone that likes shooters and watches my channel, guys. Buy this game. Make sure you get a copy before it sells out. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Now, remember to like this video. 
remember to subscribe to the channel. Until next time, peace out. And one other thing, there was actually a sequel to the game Paradise released on the PlayStation 1. Just throwing it out there. So make, out, make sure you check out the PlayStation 1 version as well. It's like 50 bucks.